Platform was maybe my favorite game genre, but I never finished Super Mario World for some reason. Or Super Mario Bros. 3, or Banjo Kazooie, or Banjo Tooie. Wow, I really need to get onto those. Anyway, this is about Super Mario World. Originally released as a launch shot for the Super Nintendo, it even went on to be Shigeru Miyamoto's favorite Mario game. Even if he ironically thinks the game is rushed and incomplete. Super Mario World is one of those games that pretty much everyone's played at some point. Now it's time for me to finally finish it. It's been almost 26 years since it was originally released. Let's see how aged or timeless this game really is. In the surprise of the century, Princess Peach, uh, I mean Princess Toadstool, I forgot this was pre Mario 64, is kidnapped yet again and Mario has to go and rescue her ass. It's time in Dinosaur Land, Mario makes his way to Bowser's castle, defeats him, and gets nothing but a kiss on the cheek from Peach. Everyone's happy and they all go on vacation. Cute Super Mario Sunshine. The end. Finn. They live happily ever after until next week when they do it all again. Oh, and Luigi was there too. It's Mario. What do you expect? Oh, I don't know what I expected. If you expect some grand tale of epic heroism and plot, you've come to the wrong place. We were down here. Moving on. Super Mario World's graphics still look good today, and that's pretty true for a lot of Super Nintendo games. Boot this thing up on Wii U's Virtual Console in HD and it still looks great. I honestly really like this style. It looks more cartoony than usual and fits really well. As for the music, I hope you like hearing the same theme all the time, because most of this game's music or remixes are the same theme. You'd think this would be annoying, but it actually never bothered me. Props to Koji Kondo. He made you listen to pretty much the same theme the whole goddamn game and it never gets boring. But man, is that Curtis theme satisfying. I swear, the underwater theme sounds like part of the Pokemon X and Y credits. My favorite theme has to be the athletic one. I don't know why, but it seems to go with literally everything. Gameplay seems like it would be a usual Mario game, but at the time, it was a usual Mario game on steroids. There's the usual one watching with a Firefly, but there's also the new Cape Feather. It lets you fall slower by holding on the jump button, it lets you jump super high and kinda fly. It's not so much flying, but more like falling the style. You have to run at full speed, then hold the jump button to jump really high, then keep pressing the direction opposite you're facing. Then, you fly. It sounds a bit clunky, but it's easier said than done. You can spin around and hit enemies with your cape or the run button, too. It's a really fun power-up, and it shows up pretty much everywhere. Let's not forget about Yoshi, either. Mario can finally gear up his trusty seat and ride through dinosaur land on, well, a dinosaur. Yoshi counts as an extra hit, too, on top of whatever power-ups you already have. After you get hit, he kinda just runs away and you can hop on it again to retrieve him. Okay, look, Yoshi. I'm sorry I let you get hurt. Just, just come back and we can make up. No! Yoshi! Suicide isn't the answer. Uh. Well, I guess I just have to rescue you again. You can spin a jump with the A button and use it to break blocks below you. Shoot firewalls in both directions, and just kind of disintegrate enemies. I'm not sure what's worse. Being crushed to death or having every cell in your body destroyed simultaneously in a big puff of smoke. You can also spin jumps to jump off Yoshi and get an extra jump. Now, the more I talk about Mario's abilities, the more of an asshole it seems to be. He kills various forest creatures, fish, and even sacrifices Yoshi just to save his own ass. Mario, you monster! To think everyone sees you as a hero. That's fine. We know the truth. Wow, that sounded way cooler in Texan out loud. Mario World's map is huge at the time, and if the level has a red dot instead of a yellow one, that means there's a secret exit hidden in the level. There's key exits too, where we have to take a key into a keyhole, and whatever this is happens. You know, I'm surprised Kingdom Hearts never referenced this. And then there's Switch Palaces. There's four Switch Palaces hidden around the game that reveal hidden blocks that usually have colored dotted lines around them. A yellow palace is really easy to find. Just finish Yoshi's Island 1. It's nearly impossible to miss. Wait, don't finish the game Yoshi's Island for this. There's a level called Yoshi's Island 1. 
You should probably play Yoshi's Island anyways, but not for the Switch Palace. Speaking of which, I didn't finish that game either. Why am I such a millennial? Anyway, Yoshi's Island will get its chance another day. I can't talk about this game without making fun of these weird enemy designs. These Goombas do not look like Goombas. They're not mushrooms, they're more like chestnuts. 0 out of 10, literally unplayable. What about these Trojan Chuck dudes? They look like football players, but they throw baseballs? But sometimes they kick footballs? But sometimes they just throw rocks at you? Okay, Nintendo. These Super Koopas look hilarious. They're like, Hi oh, guys, I'm a flying. I don't know where I was going with that, but they have the derpiest faces. They should be a Mario Maker. Rip Van Fish? Or are they called Rip because they're easy to kill? These enemies probably look weird because it's Dinosaur Land and not in the Mushroom Kingdom. These Sumo Brothers look badass though. They should be a Mario Maker too. You know, they really should put in a lot more in Mario Maker. Nintendo, please. I finished this game in about six and a half hours. This will definitely vary depending on what paths you take and general skill level. Speaking of which, I am not good at this game. This isn't a hard game, but I got way more game overs than I thought I would. I felt more confident by the end, but it just personally bugged me for some reason. Once you're done with the game, you can get the rest of the game's 96 exits. A ton of these exits are hidden, and a lot of levels can be skipped, which makes it pretty fun to see how many different ways you can make your way through the game. The main bit of post-game content is the Star World. There are hidden, more challenging levels that you can technically access before the end of the game, but let's face it. You're probably not going to find them on your first time playing. Once you're done with the hidden world, you can take on the hidden world inside the hidden world that's longer than the first hidden world. Not to mention all the dragon coins you can find in each level. This game will take a while to 100% if you don't use a guide. Wait, hold up. This game only takes up half a megabyte? How the hell did Nintendo manage to put all this content in only half a megabyte? Thumbnail for this video takes up more space. This game's not without issues though. My biggest complaint is its infrequent save points. Once you get a game over, you go back to the last point you save with no power-ups and 5 lives. If you get a lot of game overs like I did, you'll end up replaying a lot of levels for no good reason. The saving function is already there, so why can't I just save anyone on the world map? Having to start the level over without your checkpoint is fine, but having to replay the levels you already finished is dumb. I don't know, maybe there's a system limitation? This is fixed by the non-Wii Virtual Console versions due to its store points. So, there's that at least. There's this extra power-up you can store at the top of the screen. You can use it with select, it was automatically used when you take damage. I really wish it was used automatically with select instead of it slowly falling from the sky. There were so many times when it went to waste solely because I took damage at the wrong time. These issues aren't so bad, but they're still issues I had nonetheless. There's a Game Boy Advance version too, in the form of Super Mario Advance 2. I'm not gonna go into the minute differences since they changed some of the level design to accommodate the GBA, but here's the major differences. The graphics have brighter colors because of non backlit models, and the audio quality isn't as good. Luigi is an alternate playable character now, and is more than just a palette swap. He runs slower, but he jumps higher and has his own unique sprite. You can switch between the characters at any time on the world map. There's also his completion checklist, so you can warp around the map instead of slowly having to go back to where you want. Granted, I haven't played this version, but it's got plenty of good changes. It's still a good version to play if you want extra bells and whistles in exchange for poor presentation. Pick your poison. Super Mario World is overall really good. I don't see it as a masterpiece that other people praise it as, but it's still an awesome game. Both the Super Nintendo and GBA versions are on the Wii U eShop for 8 bucks, and the Super Nintendo version is on the new 3DS eShop if you want more portability. This thing will inevitably be on Switch at some point, too. Never having finished it before, I feel like I just lost my game of virginity. Now to lose my actual virginity. Ladies? No? Oh, okay. This has been that Flame Assassin guy. Tune in next time I'm gonna use some kind of Switch video. I'll probably make a video about my early impressions first, but hey, who knows. I'll be sure to get around into reviewing Binding of Isaiah Plus and Zelda Breath of the Wild eventually. See you next mission.